being at Juilliard at that time, what was the environment like and how did you find it? Well, um, we were, it was still uptown in the small, much smaller building. And, hmm. and um, well, I found it, I had gone to Wellesley College and it has a warm and fuzzy feeling and makes hmm. everybody happy and <laughs> I loved it. And, and then I went to Juilliard and absolutely making people happy was not the goal. Yeah. And, and I, I came away thinking, well, that's kind of a factory, mm. but it taught me skills that I absolutely wanted. It taught me to be a composer, and I mm. was very grateful. Yeah. And I was the only woman in my in the composition department, I think. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but everybody treated me decently, you know, mm -hmm. didn't make me feel different Great. or inadequate or anything like that. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. And how, how many, were you, were you there for two years or? Two and a half. Two and a half years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I quit early to get married. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great. Well, I, I thought one thing we could start talking about a little bit, um, and it's and it has a bit to do with what we were just talking about, you know, about being a woman in an environment where there weren't many, mm -hmm. and and so I wanted to ask you about when you started to get an idea that you you wanted to write music and that was something that you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a bit about how you first thought of being a composer, you know, and, and what that meant to you? Well, um, when I was six, uh, a great aunt gave us a little old square piano, which was the first piano I had had in the house, and I took, started taking some lessons, and I started making little pieces. And she, and my teacher was very encouraging, and she taught me how to write it down and all that. So at six years old, I, you know, I didn't know much, and um, she moved away, and I got another teacher who was a very nice person, uh, but she not interested in composition. Mm. That was not her thing. So uh, I didn't think about it much until I got to college, to Wellesley. Well, I, I took piano all that time, mm -hmm. and I think I thought vaguely, well, I'd like to do this too, mm -hmm. but I'm not ready yet. Yeah. So at, at Wellesley I majored in music, and I think there was one harmony course and one counterpoint course or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, and some history, yeah. but it was very meager mm. uh, preparation for actually going out and being a composer. Mm. So I headed for Juilliard, yeah. and I knew that was the place to go. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah, definitely. Mm. So, so when I was, well, when I was in high school. World War II was going on, and that was my knowledge of the world, pretty much. Mm. And see new thrills whenever we'd right. go to the movies and, uh, and so forth. Um, and then when I was in college, it was just over, and, and uh, things were getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there was, I think, more interest in mu in contemporary music by that time. After the war. Yeah. Yeah. It was more free. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I remember in, in grade school, high school too, I guess, they wouldn't teach German. Mm -hmm. Right. Because <gasps> of the bad feeling. Yeah, sure. So, um... So that's, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I really enjoyed Juilliard in spite of it being totally different and mm. not sociable 
I didn't mix. I was very shy and didn't yeah. mix with the young men are all around me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. How long do you, do you feel there was a, a period of time when you were adjusting to how things were different there in terms of approaching music and, you know, maybe the, the, the seriousness of it? Yeah, but I thought it was so exciting because yeah. I was encountering music I hadn't heard before. Bartok really mm. took me off my feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can understand. Mm -hmm. So it was that time was kind of a, a very broadening time, mm -hmm. like a very, a except you know they didn't teach drop door music at all mm. any of that school. Really, that was a big lack in my education. Mm. I've been sorry about that. Yeah. Huh. It seems a bit surprising. I mean, uh, yeah. I would have I would have thought that they would have been at that time. I know. But, huh. I would think so, too. I never well, found out why. Hmm. Yeah. It, was that something that you felt you needed to learn on your own? That the 12-tone well, technique? Well, I, have, I haven't really studied it. Thrown it into sure. some pieces, but I've never, you know, written a strictly mm -hmm. twelve-tone piece. Did you ever feel that it was important to do that? No. No. Great. No. You know, I thought, well, this is a technique that can help change some elements, but I guess basically I like some sort of a harmonic background, though I didn't write tonal music. Mm -hmm. I don't write tonal music. Mm -hmm. Do you, so. Perhaps did when you when you were beginning a piece, you would kind of generate your own sort of structure for mm -hmm. for the piece, mm -hmm. but not using a tonal structure. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was very poor in harmony. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> hmm. Well, do you feel like uh, was that something that you? you had to make up for or do you feel like other things were more important to you or well I have come to realize that I've got to watch out for the lack of things that tonal music gives you hmm. um, you know I, I try to be totally free of it but then somebody comes to me and say look this is Nick Meyer <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't know <laughs> you mean in, in your music yeah yeah I, I just wrote what I felt was good. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, some people saw, heard tonality. In it would, it. yeah, would see it, even though you may not have mm -hmm. intended for it no. to be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, very interesting. I hear tonality in Berg and Daver, you know, yeah. when they hit it, happen to hit into sort of a triad Is in their so? series. Yeah, it mm -hmm. happens. You, your ear picks up on it and you mm -hmm. think, ah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a moment of right. tonality. Yeah. It's so funny to hear Betty say she wasn't good in harmony because the harmonic uh, layering of the pieces of hers that I've heard was magnificent. Mm -hmm. It's funny. It's a nat it must be a natural, you must have a natural ear for it. Well, I've, yeah, I've tried to go with, you know, what I would like to hear. Uh, without having any rules, mm -hmm. um, except that I like that. And sometimes somebody says, well, you need more bass here, here. <laughs> and uh, are, uh, you really are, are repeating that, some, that figure or that sound too much. Mm -hmm. But I... I Try to watch for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would. I mean, from from what I've heard of your music too, that I wouldn't say that you're weak in harmony at all either. <laughs> so, so that was that was funny to hear. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I wasn't good in following the old rules. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, did. Um, did they make you take counterpoint? I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. curious how you dealt with counterpoint, in, and. Juilliard or in Wellesley, did they oh, have counterpoint? I love counterpoint. Oh, okay, that's it then. And, well, I, you know, when they tell me rules, like no consecutive fifths or something, 
that means, well, I'll look for a place where I can use 10 seconds.